Nothing has caused me more grief in this project than backing up and doing guidance. And one of the reasons why is when you can imagine the antenna is here and then so the points are trailing away. Now based on the pivot, when the tractor turns, that is in a different part of the circle, so the heading is all wrong. Here you can see what happens. It's up to nine degrees, ten degrees. That's different. This is the bottom one's the IMU, and this is the GPS calculation. So as you turn, and as you, and you can see now it's four, five, six, seven. As you turn, and you have a ten degree error, well, it'll completely overshoot. And then by the time you straighten out the wheels again, then it's right, and the IMU tries to catch up, and it's a nightmare, and it does not work. It also screws up the uh, forward and reverse detection, and nothing works. So then it jumps around and it's just a problem. So how do we fix it? But before we do that, the uh, going forward, you can see it isn't as big of a problem because you have the antenna and then the points go behind. I'm just going to edit some code out here. The points go behind the antenna and then between the pivot and the antenna, it roughly shows your actual heading. So that's the difference between going forward and going backwards. Now what that code does is it takes a portion of the steer angle, multiplies that by some magic factor that seems to work on my tractor, but I'm going to have to make, maybe make it adjustable. But you don't get that huge swing anymore. So we're taking that, when we're turning the tractor, we try to eliminate some of that air and we go back and forth. And you can see that it auto steers just fine in reverse. Any speed, anywhere, anytime, it uh, just follows on the line. Now the look ahead, as you can see, is much longer because from the antenna to here to here, the look ahead might have to be changed when backing up. Maybe it has to be shorter or half the distance, that sort of thing. So that's something to look, but it works really, really well. And going forward and backwards, another problem was and I noticed this too, it would jump on its own and it was really annoying. You always had to push the middle of the tractor, reset the direction, drive ahead one and a half kilometers an hour and that sort of thing. And that was not good. But now you can go in circles. Here we are backing up, jumping the line over using the... See, a little bit of error, but not too bad. It comes right onto the line. It's not perfect. Again, I think mostly because of that long look ahead, but pretty darn good. So here I was talking about, you know, with that air eliminated, you can see how it, both of them are dropping. That was a fairly long, um, mostly IMU fusion on this. So, but the IMU follows the, the GPS heading quite closely. And that's a, that was a big problem, is if you have this big jump and a difference between the two, then it couldn't tell, were you backing up, were you going forward. This was, this was the acid test, was to go forward like that, crank the wheels, and then go the other way. And it would fail that test all the time on the older versions. So yeah, it seems to work quite well, at least on my tractor. Uh, mileage may vary once it gets out into the real world then gonna have to figure out what's happening so yeah this is a new chart it's called heading chart and the red is the gps and the green is your imu there it jumped from zero to 360 so it's just gonna and then jump back again but it just shows the difference between the two and it's very handy i see it can go anywhere you want it just stays backwards and forwards. It's been an hour, about an hour going back and forward and testing the software and crank it one way, crank it the other way. And I never once had to hit the middle of the tractor to reset it. So, eh, I don't want to jinx it, but this is a huge step forward. Either this or I'm going to drive over my laptop.